Master of Speech. Uh, Dr. Uh, Ming Gang Cai from Xiamen University. Dear President, dear Chairman Professor Lee, and uh, other ladies and gentlemen, it's my, all, it's my, uh, my honor to uh, give you the topic. But before the topic, I should say some uh, thanks. Uh, first, we should thank the attendance of the uh, President of, uh, of Iceland. Also, thanks to the government and people from Iceland as you uh, give us have a big chance to visit your very beautiful city, very beautiful uh, Gulf. And also we need to thank lots to our uh, China Embassy. Uh, yeah, you know that we got money from China government, so we also need to say thanks. Uh, uh, man, many financial support from the Ocean Public Farewell Scientific Research Project we also need to thank the National, National Science Foundation of China. So we also need to say a great thanks to Xiaolong and uh, Mr. Wang. Yeah. Uh, my topic is, is about the fate of some typical persistent toxic substance from the Northern Pacific to the Arctic. Uh, to be true, uh, the topic is too big for me. Uh, what I want to show is only uh, the work of my own uh, works. So uh, I should introduce some of my uh, co-authors. Co uh, Dr. Colleen Weber, uh, she is from, from uh, Emil University, Sweden. Environmental Chemistry. Also, Dr. Xia Ziyong from GKSS uh, Institute from Germany. And also, Dr. Cai Ming Hong from Polar Research Institute of uh, China. So let me take some time to give you my personal introduction. My major interest is about uh, focusing on the fate of PTS from low attitude to the polar area. So I worked in College of Ocean and Earth Science, uh, Xiamen University. So Xiamen is the very small island. So if uh, uh, I think that if you have time, I, uh, it's very big welcome to visit our university. Okay, the next is about my personal experience in Arctic. I joined myself uh, the third and fifth Chinese Arctic expedition. Although my, uh, my total group joined the total five uh, Arctic expedition. So we did lots of work in the Arctic. We take the air samples, also bicycles, also snows, sea waters, and also sediments. So. <coughs> and also we do some cooperations with scientists in Europe. I think it's very important things for us to make the good works. Uh, from 2006 to 2007, I do some works as postdoctor in uh, Northern Europe. And then last year, I did the same work as a visiting scientist in Sweden. So till now, we have very deeply cooperations. So when I come to the land on, in Greenland, uh, Iceland, I feel very, ha very happy, I'm very uh, familiar with these things. Also from 2010, we have uh, cooperations with uh, Germany scientists. So now we have some co-operation ties like, like uh, student changes, joint studies, or data share sharing. So uh, now we to our topic is about these four aspects. First is about what are persistent toxic substance. 
Uh, I should give you some as, uh, uh, basic aspect. Uh, about PDS is uh, organic compounds, it have a toxic effects on organisms like carcinogenesis, uh, or uh, matogenesis. Also, it have a disturbing of endurance. <coughs> Because of these things, uh, it's always persistence and the semi volatile characteristics. So this kind of uh, compound could be transferred from the low altitude to the polar area. And because of they have bioaccumulation and biomagnification characteristics, it could be transferred from the lower to higher le level by the uh, food chain. So, <coughs> Uh, what our focusing PTS includes major persistent pollutants uh, include like uh, traditional persistent organic pollutants like pesticides, pH, or dioxin, and PCB, and also some other new potential persistent pollutants. This is about the 12 pops, and most of them are pesticides and uh, some of them uh, come from the industrial chemicals and also by the products like uh, confusion. <coughs> also, they have some new polyphenolated compounds we call PFC. And uh, these things have been applied in many industrial and uh, consumer products due to their unique properties. So, but these things is be proved that it's not so good for our body. And then, why is worldwide action necessary? And why we Chinese environmental scientists come to the Arctic? Uh, I ever saw a, a speech from President of, uh, 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 he said that uh, the energy in Iceland is very good, almost no pollutions. But in the Arctic, they still we could find many kinds of pollutants inside. Why? Just because you know that uh, this kind of pops is persistent and uh, semi-volatile. Uh, uh, so we can see from the uh, pictures, they can transport from like here uh, in the low altitudes in the Southeast Asia and to the Arctic. So, well, it's uh, moved to the Arctic. We know the Arctic region is one of the most sensitive areas, which is much, e much easily affected by the human activities. So, the other thing is about uh, pollutants pathway to the Arctic. Uh, we know from the pictures, uh, the major pathway is uh, about this uh, following. One is the wind currents. Uh, wind currents like this are able to bring harmful chemicals to the Arctic, sometimes in the matter of weeks after their uses. The second is about the river transportation. Uh, this is especially true that some rivers, uh, which may still carry large deposits of uh, uh, contaminants like PCB. So, and the other thing is the ocean transportation. So, because of these strong winds and the currents falling to the Arctic and the cold, tem cold temperature in the Arctic, so this environment acts always as a sink for this contaminant. This is normal things. And on the other aspect, we know that during the recent currents, uh, during the re uh, recent decades, they have very rapid change in the Arctic. The thickness of sea ice decreased and the coverage of the sea ice also decreased. So, although uh, there's still some new PTS might be transferred to the Arctic, and the fate of traditional pollutants hidden in the Arctic might be changed. So, what do we do? During the, supported by Chinese government, we have five, five expeditions in the Arctic. So, uh, to be true, we have some uh, important re research re results have been published in some environmental journals. 
I just uh, uh, mentioned sub lamb. First is about uh, a small part of PTS, including some PFC and uh, BFR and uh, high molecular weight pHs were first reported in the seawater sediments and air from the Arctic oceans. And uh, this is the new paper. And we found that four natural PFCs was first reported in the Pacific Ocean and its adjacent Arctic Ocean. And also in 2011, uh, several high molecule weight pH have been first detected near North Pole. Also, uh, a new brominated from retardants, we call uh, DB, DPE, which was introduced in the environment in early 1990s, but uh, more than 10 years later, uh, 20 years later, it could be detected in Arctic. So it's very serious since. Uh, the third is uh, about long-range transport mechanism of PFC. Uh, we try to find some uh, transport mechanisms about the oceanic and uh, atmospheric transport of some PFC compounds. Uh, also, we did some uh, detection of PFC in China coastal sea area. We are lucky. We find that the the data is very low, almost far less than other countries. So if you detect in your coastal sea, coastal sea, coastal sea water, so it's not Chinese fault. Uh, the last one is uh, about the uh, geochemical processes. Uh, yes, for some new pollutants, it's still the Arctic act as a sink. But you know that as the environmental changed much, and uh, because of seawater air exchange process changed, so uh, for some traditional pollutants, Arctic is not only sink, but maybe the source of pollutants. So this is our uh, some <coughs> uh, working. Also, uh, we know that the sources of pollutants in Arctic. Uh, may be come from several ways like atmosphere, uh, uh, like talent, ice threat, also local things. So uh, to be true, it's still complicated. <coughs> so, <coughs> so it needs many works. <coughs> okay, <coughs> the last one, I think uh, it's very important for us to do, to, 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 to do together to make cooperation. Uh, here one was, no government acting alone can adequately protect its citizens or its environment from the, from the threat of pops. So, what we should do? Uh, we know from the above presentation that Iceland is a very important Arctic country, and China is the land Arctic, uh, although it's a big develop, uh, developing country. I think that both countries have a duty and the, the owner. We have very good friendship and we have very good development hope. So, uh, I suggest maybe uh, in the coming future, the scientists from China and Iceland Arctic can make more cooperations in environmental <coughs> protections. So, jump together and look for opportunities in the high north. Yeah, thanks for. <coughs>